President Biden finishing his European trip by visiting Poland today as he focuses on Ukrainian refugees during the war with Russia. Plus, an officer injured in an attempted burglary early this morning. It's just one of our top stories today. A lighter note this weekend may be a good time to catch up some of the biggest films releases. We get ready for the Oscars right here on KSAT and ABC Sunday night. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's a great day because it's Friday, March 25th. Yes, it's Friday and the weather is nice. It's already warming up to the 50. 50s right now. Lots of sunshine out there, so that means another quick warm up. How high will we go later today, temperature wise, Justin? It's possible, Mark, that we make it close to 90 degrees by later today. So we're talking close to a 50 degree temperature swing. That's pretty huge. Really dry air tends to do that for us. It was chilly this morning, so we go from jackets this morning. We're still at 52 degrees to shorts and t shirts this afternoon. 39 still in Kerrville at this hour, 52 New Braunfels. We're at 54 right now in Del Rio. Forecast next couple days. If you've got plans this weekend, looks beautiful, but I'll tell you it'll be a little breezy both Saturday and Sunday and fairly warm. Close to 90 both days there too. It's not until next week that we get a few changes in the forecast. I got to pass this along too. Uh, ozone levels up today. It's an ozone action day for those who have asthma or are sensitive to that kind of thing. Heads up. Uh, it's unhealthy for those with uh, sensitivity to ozone forecast by noontime. We're up to 77 degrees here in San Antonio. 80s already showing up in places like Castroville and Divine. And then by this afternoon, by five o'clock, we're close to 88 degrees. There will be some 90s out there too. A warm day for everybody with plenty of sun to go around. And this evening, if you're heading out to dinner, temperatures in the 70s and 80s should be a fantastic evening. Less wind today, which is nice. We'll take another look at that weekend forecast. We'll talk about the chance for some thunderstorms too coming up next week, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with TransSky. There's a look there at I-10 at Provent and I-35 at Brooklyn. Things are moving right now. Let's look at today's nine at nine. It's been one month since the war in Ukraine began and Ukrainian forces are continuing to go on offense. Ukraine's armed forces claiming victory after it destroyed a Russian warship, but Russia claims it's making progress moving closer to capturing the coastal city of Mariupol. President Joe Biden visiting Poland today in his last stop on his European trip and today's focus are the Ukrainian refugees. The president saying the U.S. will take in 100,000 refugees. He's also planning on visiting U.S. troops stationed in Poland as well. After more than 30 hours of hearings, the Senate is on track to confirm Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson as the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. But it would most likely be without the support of Republicans. Democrats can confirm Jackson on their own in the 50-50 Senate since Vice President Kamala Harris can cast the tie-breaking vote. Jackson is the first black woman nominated for the nation's highest court in its more than 200-year history. Five days after a Chinese airline crashed in southern China, the cause of the crash remains a mystery. Crews are continuing to search for the plane's second black box as well. Persistent rain has made search efforts difficult. 132 people aboard the plane died in the crash on Monday. The January 6th House Committee is looking at text messages between the former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and conservative activist Virginia Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Virginia Thomas attended a pro-Trump rally ahead of the Capitol attack, but says she played no role in planning the events of that day. Former President Donald Trump has filed a federal lawsuit against Hillary Clinton and people allegedly involved with the opposition research in 2016. The lawsuit alleges Clinton and the Democratic National Committee fabricated a link between the Trump campaign and Russia, triggering what it calls an unfolded federal investigation and a media frenzy. Clinton has not commented on the lawsuit. Average rent prices in the U.S. just hit a new record. According to a report from Realtor.com, the national median rent was $1,792 last month. That's a 17% jump from a year ago, marking double-digit increases for studio apartments, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms. Rental prices will likely remain high, but some cooling is expected. Yesterday, the FDA authorized several e-cigarette products to be sold. The agency said the benefit for adult smokers as an alternative to traditional cigarettes outweighs the risk that young people could start using them. 
They also acknowledge the authorization does not mean that the products are safe, nor does it mean they are, quote, FDA approved. Your mail carrier is more likely to be driving an electric truck next year. The U.S. Postal Service says it's doubling its initial planned purchases of electric vehicles, ordering 50,000 new ones for nearly $3 billion. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your other morning headlines, there's another war against Russia going on, not just in Ukraine. And a Southwest Airlines passenger delivers a serious blow. The Great Barrier Reef has turned white again, and retirement did not sit well with one Nevada man. David Sears is here to explain all this this morning. Good morning. Yeah, some people just like to sit and relax during retirement. This gentleman, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Not going to happen. Got like basically another career after 40 years. So we'll have that for you in just a second. But first, let's start with this. The U.S. may not be fighting Russia directly on the battlefield, but they are in a constant war with Russia when it comes to cyber attacks. The Justice Department at least won a battle. Four Russian hackers have been indicted. Three of the hackers are Russian intelligence officers. They are accused of hacks targeted at hundreds of energy companies around the world. The hacking took place from 2012 to 2018. And according to documents, Three of the hackers went after an energy company here in the U.S. The fourth hacker was a Russian Ministry Defense Research Institute employee. Since Russia attacked Ukraine over a month ago, President Biden has warned companies of the possibility of Russian cyber attacks, especially in the energy sector. Many companies have already invested in upgraded protection. Wild scene at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson Airport. Let me get out of the way of this guy right here. Watch what he does. He walks behind the counter. The Southwest passenger just hauls off and punches a worker of Southwest Airlines behind that counter. But he comes back at the traveler that worker does. He tries to get to him. By the way, again, the suspect just keeps wandering around. He tried to come back at the worker, but other employees kept them separated. It definitely got the attention of passengers and other workers in that area. Everybody's surprised and shocked that it even got that far of the man putting hands on a worker. They need to get big on security because my thing is that shouldn't even happen. TSA shouldn't just be in one area. They should be all through the airport so just in case something like that happened. Yeah, that passenger is 44-year-old Courtney Drummond. It all started while he was on the plane and refused to comply with flight attendants' instructions as the plane was leaving the gate. So the pilots returned to the gate, got Drummond off, and then he went off on that worker, wandered around a while, took off his jacket, then he took off his shirt. He was eventually arrested, and now that video is gonna be used as evidence. By the way, the FAA says there were nearly 6,000 reports of unruly passengers in just 2021 alone. That's the worst year on record. Most of the incidents were related to passengers refusing to wear masks. There is another bleaching problem with the Australia's Great Barrier Reef. It is the sixth massive bleaching the reef has suffered. Bleaching occurs basically when the coral is stressed, loses its algae that lives inside, and that algae is what keeps the coral the colorful colors that they are. So it turns out white since it's being bleached. According to NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, that stress comes from warmer water, light, Loss of nutrients, corals off the Florida Keys actually bleached back in 2010 because the water got too cold. It dropped like 40 degrees, but the barrier reef, scientists are considering adding it to their in danger list. The Australian government has put up about $700 million to support protection. And finally this morning, here's your feel good story to get you started off on the weekend. Meet Nick Klotz. He is a retired veterinarian after 43 years. But he's not just sitting at home with his feet up watching TV. Nope, he has turned his veterinarian skills into baking skills. Nick started at the Catholic Charities Facility in Reno, Nevada about eight years ago. At first, he was just using his skills to cut up vegetables. Now, he is the baker. It's one of the founding principles of Catholic Charities is to try and not only give people a warm meal, a warm blanket, a warm piece of advice, but to give them some dignity in their life as they do. One of the fascinating things about being a veterinarian is you got to interact with people and you got to help people every single day. And sitting at home on the couch, you don't have those opportunities. So Nick is up and at him at 5.15 in the morning, five days a week, baking all kinds of goodies. He's usually done by 10 and ready to come back the next day and do it all over again. He said when he shows up on Monday mornings, he's got to start from scratch because all the baked goods are gone. Oh, wow. They're all eaten. It's a busy guy. I bet he loved being a vet, but he loves this even more. I bet he, I bet he enjoys this.
Yeah. I'm sure they appreciate the help mm -hmm. as well. Well, we asked you for a feel good story for the week. There and you go. delivered, yes. David's here. Good job. Thank you very much, sir. Right now, 908, about 52 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The Oscars are this weekend, and if you need to catch up on your movies, this might be a good time to do that. So we'll look at some of the top movies up for awards coming up a little bit later. Plus, And the Texas Cavaliers are getting ready for Fiesta. We're going to tell you about their annual bargain day out here at the San Antonio Riverwalk and the process it takes to get these floats into the water ahead of that parade coming right up. Welcome back, everybody. It is now just about 9-12. It's a big day for the Texas Cavaliers as they get ready for Fiesta and the River Parade. RJ Marcus is live with the start of the preps at the Riverwalk. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. It is pretty cool out here because this is the Cavaliers annual barge in day. So this is basically all the work that's starting right here to get the parade on the Riverwalk as we get set for Fiesta, which is going to be really exciting. And as we've been out here, they've been setting up some of these barges now with this huge crane, as you can see, putting these barges into the water. So it's a pretty cool experience. And again, this is all how all the magic is made right before the Cavaliers River Parade, which, of course, you can see on KSAT. 12. So joining me now to talk more about the manpower behind all this is Gardner PV. He is the parade marshal. Gardner, thank you very much for being with us this morning oh, yeah. on KSAT 12. Yeah. So just talk about how many Cavaliers are going to be out here, how many barges you guys are putting into the water. That's great. We, we have over 600 members, probably 350 of those are working throughout this week and on volunteering doing all this. Those barges weigh 2,600 pounds. There, it's a big deal putting it in. So this, this is a fun kickoff. No going back now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned where do you, we were talking a little bit earlier, but where do you guys actually keep these barges? Where do you store them? Because I know you guys also work with the city and use some of their floats as well. We do. We have a great in-kind sponsor for years at Bell Hydrogas. Mm -hmm. The Bell family, that's where we store our barges off Southeast Military. So I don't know how we do it without them. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And as we get ready for the River Parade, obviously one of the highlights of Fiesta, this year's theme is Texas Al Fresco, the Texas Outdoors. Right. We're in the outdoors right now. How Beautiful excited are about here. you about this event and people kind of just getting back into Fiesta mode this year? That's right. You know, we picked that theme because what did we all do during the pandemic? We went outside. We went outside. We enjoyed the outdoors. San Antonio is the best quality of life for that. So let's celebrate that. Yeah, we're back, so we're excited. Okay, anything else that you could tell us about the River Parade, just let our viewers know, and just, uh, just you know, the general excitement about uh, this event. Yeah, th this parade started in 1941, if you can believe it. And it, it would have been the 80th year, it took a few years off for World War II. It's the 77th year, technically. Mm -hmm. So there's 56 floats this year. Not only is it kind of one-of-a-kind river parade, but it's definitely the longest. And the participants are charities throughout the city, and uh, it's going to be fun. April 4th, that's around the corner. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, guys, and as Gardner mentioned, yes, we are right around the corner from Fiesta, starting back up here in San Antonio. A lot of excitement across the city and out here as the Cavaliers get ready for the annual river parade. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you. Great weather for it, too. Oh, fantastic. Does it get any better than this, does it, Justin Horn? It doesn't. I mean, uh, it is very nice. Here we are. Uh, it, very nice. Now, I can't promise it'll be that way for Fiesta. I mean, we still got a couple of weeks, right? So right. we'll see how it, it plays out in <laughs> April. But uh, nice today. Nice today. Nice this weekend. And one thing you're really going to notice today is the swing in temperatures. We started out this morning at 41 here in San Antonio. That was around 7.05 a.m. By this afternoon, we expect to be up near 88 degrees. That's a 47 degree temperature swing. Why do we get swings like that? It's all about the dry air. Dew points in the 20s right now. Yesterday was very, very dry. And now these dew points are actually up a little bit from yesterday, but this is still extremely dry air. We've still got some teens out to the west. When you get dew points in the teens, that's about as dry as it gets around here. The good news is I do think dew points will steadily increase as we get into the weekend and next week. And that helps us out a little bit with that fire danger. Just not as dry. You don't have to apply chapstick every day, but that's the kind of situation we're in right now. As we go outside for you, clear skies. 52 degrees at the airport, 55 Stinson, 52 Kelly. Not a lot of wind out there. 
a lot less wind than yesterday in the forecast and we should see light winds out of the south most of today. 52 in the Braunfels, 50 in Gonzales. We've got some 40s on the map still in places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg, but those numbers will rise quickly. 61 Catula and uh, 57 right now in Uvalde. A little closer to home, 46 Boulevardi, 46 Bernie Stage, 46 right now in Canyon Lake. 39 in Comfort, although that number probably will rise uh, here very, very soon. As we look at the forecast for today, we'll take it up to 77 by noontime. We're already in the 80s by 1 o'clock. And then by 3 p.m., 85, 87, 4 o'clock, 88 by 5 p.m. You have plans to go out this evening? Looks great. Temperatures will fall into the 70s by 8 p.m. and then 74 by 9 p.m. Here's a look at the dew point tracker. We mentioned those dew points really do start to come up over the weekend. And then we peak on Tuesday. That's when we get our next storm system in here. And there is a chance for rain there. After that, we see the dry air come back in Wednesday and Thursday. And we're going to have another couple dry days during that uh, time period. This weekend, 89 Saturday, 87 on Sunday. Some cool mornings, great afternoons. Winds will be a little bit gusty both days. Here's a look at our future cast. And I do need to mention there could be a little bit of fog tomorrow morning closer to the coast, not here in San Antonio. And we'll see that again probably Sunday too. It gets a little closer, but still I think we avoid the fog here in town. Then as we zoom out some, we look at Monday, Monday morning, some clouds to start and then sun in the afternoon. It's not until Tuesday that we start to see things change a little bit. Area of low pressure comes in. That brings in a 30% chance of rain. Really Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. It's a small window. I'm not too confident that we're going to see a ton of rain out of this, but there is a chance for some thunderstorms. We need to mention that. And then by Wednesday afternoon, this is all moving away. Probably some severe weather to our north. We're going to be on the tail end of things as we often are, so we kind of miss out on uh, really any big risk of severe weather. At least that's the way it looks right now. We'll keep you posted. 89 Saturday, 87 Sunday, as we said, mid-80s, both Monday and Tuesday. There's your 30% chance of rain Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. And then 83 Wednesday, 84 on Thursday as we officially go into Fiesta. So at least the first day yes. looks good. Yeah. Okay, we can handle that. Yep. First day of Fiesta. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. 918, 55 degrees. And coming up next, David Sears is going to join us again with a look at the latest NCAA scores. And we're going to have a preview of the Oscars happening this weekend. We'll be right back. Welcome back. What a great night of college basketball at the AT&T Center last night. And they don't call it March Madness for nothing. David Sears is here to explain all that again. I was flipping back and forth between a couple of games last night, David. I see you had to stay up last night, didn't you? A little bit. A little bit. Couldn't go to bed early because you didn't want to miss no, it. I didn't want to miss that, especially oh. uh, some, some of those big endings. And as we say, that's why they call it March Madness. Yep. Another number one done. There's only one number one team left and we're not even through the sweet 16 yet we're not even to the i call them the great eight justin says they're the elite eight right but we're not even to that part yet we still got four more games tonight to go another one number one could fall tonight but first all right so let's check out the scores for you from last night here in san antonio look at that score houston beat arizona i mean they were just they were just all over arizona arizona is a big team they should have been out rebounding houston but it didn't happen and Houston was able to get inside, shoot outside. 72 to 60 is the final. And then Michigan, you probably figured this was going to happen. Villanova beat Michigan. That was the other game last night here in San Antonio, 63-55. So here's the matchup for the regional final here in San Antonio. That's coming up tomorrow at 5.09. It's Houston and Villanova. What is so great about this, a lot of Houston fans can actually make it to the AT&T Center. If they didn't get there last night, they can get there this weekend. Saturday afternoon, basketball in the AT&T Center. Can't beat that, so expect a lot of Cougar fans to make that trip here to San Antonio to see them take on Villanova. And this could be a huge upset tomorrow if Houston can pull this thing off and make it to the Final Four. That'd be awesome. And the other two games last night, Duke beat Texas Tech, so that's a two beat and a three. Tech hung in there for a long time. Actually led most of the game, but Duke was able to pull it out. I think they shot like 71% wow. in the second half, made like oh eight goodness. baskets in a row. Ouch. And that bonded Tech defense was not able to slow these guys down. So they ended up taking the lead and holding on to it. 78-73 is that final. So Coach Krzyzewski lives to, I think they say, dance another day. Dance another day. So that makes sense. Be, uh, he and his Duke Blue Devils will be taking on Arkansas all over Gonzaga. See, there's a, another number one 
Yeah. Them. Our, Gonzaga was the number one team in the entire tournament. They were top seed for the whole thing, and they lose to the fourth seeded Arkansas Razorback 74 68. So that's going to be a pretty good matchup between Duke and Arkansas. That also takes place on Saturday. And then, um, yes, Arkansas. They've had several days <laughs> off, Steph. Yeah, that's, that's good. A, look, look at the time. That's a weird time to start a basketball game in the NBA on a Saturday afternoon. But yep. the Pelicans are actually coming off a win last night against Chicago. Mm. So they are now two games ahead of the Spurs for that 10th spot. So this is a huge game. This is the last time they'll meet in the regular season. So if the Spurs can pull off a win tomorrow night in New Orleans, they can cut that lead down to one. And then the Spurs still have Portland to play a couple more times. And we know Portland's not exactly, you know, yeah, still. That in re blazes. rebuilding. And we said when the other night, we said it was a must win against the Pelicans. And now the yeah. one's uh, so very much a must win. This could be huge. So it could cut it to one, or if they lose, it could go to three. So yeah. uh, this is big with, with just a few games left in the regular season. So. Right. Hopefully that weird time will pay off. So 4 o'clock, I expect you to be sitting in front of your TV. I expect the neighbors to be knowing you're watching the Spurs. <laughs> right. I expect the screams and yells and cheers to be so loud okay. between you and Rooney that the neighbors are going, wow, they must oh. be watching the Spurs down there at the... She's much louder than me. At the Steph household. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Well, there's your matchup for tomorrow. So you got the Spurs, and then you got the uh, you got Houston, and yeah, it's a busy uh, day. The big game tomorrow. Who is it? Was it Houston and who did I say? Houston and Villanova. Yeah. Yes. Oh. That's a biggie. Yes. Right. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, All David. Right. Thank you, David. The Oscars are Sunday night right here on KSAT 12. You need to catch up on some of the biggest movies out right now. We have a few to get you started. So grab that tub of popcorn, grab the remote, and get comfy because there are a lot of big films out right now that are up for awards. ABC's Will Gans breaks it down for us. Are you ready to host the Oscars? The hosts are back. The red carpet is back. And of course, so are the stars. Best bets this year include Will Smith and King Richard for Best Actor as the father of Venus and Serena Williams. Now I don't even mind you saying we hard on these kids. You know why? Because we are. I think the consensus around him is that this is the performance that the Academy wants to honor him for. It's sort of a shock that he does not have an Oscar. For supporting actress, Ariana DeBose has all the momentum for her role in West Side Story. Are you having the year? I'm, I don't know if it's the year, but it's a year, and dagnabbit, it's special. Expect the stars to support Ukraine. The colors of the Ukrainian flag have been a staple on other red carpets. The fact that Mila Kunis, who is Ukrainian, is going to be presenting, I've heard that there is going to be a nice moment with her doing a tribute to the country. Diversity this year includes deaf actors, with Coda up for Best Picture. I never thought I would get to this moment. Coda's Troy Kotzer is a favorite for Best Supporting Actor. We've been separated for so long and there's been a communication breakdown between the hearing community and the deaf community, so we've pulled them both together. A dark horse could be Cody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog. His quiet performance helped the film gain awards momentum. You know what I call you? Mr. Slow Burn. Slow Burn. I yeah. like that. I'll take yeah. that. The Power of the Dog has won key Best Picture awards leading up to Oscar, but it was shut out at the Screen Actor Guild Awards. The Power of the Dog has a lot of fans. It also has a lot of detractors. Coda is much more of a consensus film. To save time, some Oscars will be handed out off the air, then edited for television. And of course, the hosts, Regina Hall, Amy Schumer, and Wanda Sykes, promised to entertain. Was it time? to bring hosts back to the Oscars. Last year's show was a disaster on many different levels, one of which is that there was no through line. There was nobody guiding you through the show. This year, there's an audience award as the Academy appeals to voters who may not have seen all of the nominated films, but it's not an official Oscar. Fans chose the winner online. In Hollywood, I'm Stephanie Elam. Oh, we ran the wrong story, but it's still Oscar related. Still yes. gave you some of the ones to watch this weekend. So we're still on track. Yes. OK, we'll, we'll see. We'll get another time on ABC. That's right. Right now, 928, about 56 degrees. A lot more ahead on GMSA and 9, including the latest from Ukraine via our sister station, KPRC. They have a team in Poland and they give us a look at the situation on the ground in Eastern Europe. And we'll be right back.
Top stories we're following today. A 25 year old man has been arrested in the death of a local elementary school teacher. San Antonio police believe Matthew Weising shot and killed Michael Ekenese at the Eckert Heights apartment earlier this month. And we are told from police that Ekenese was dating a woman that Wessing had previously been involved with. Now, investigators say Weising's relatives told police they suspected he was involved in the day of the shooting, but police didn't have enough evidence to arrest him at the time. Officers say they were able later to find surveillance pity video that put Weising at the scene of the shooting. A sheriff's officer responding to a burglary call comes into contact with two suspects and says he had no choice but to fire his weapon. In a neighborhood near Lower Seguin Road and FM 1518, this happened around 2 a.m. Now the responding officer arrived on scene and found the suspects inside a car that began driving towards him. Police said the vehicle hit the officer and that's what he pulled out his weapon. Sometime later, one of the suspects was arrested. That second suspect is still on the run. The officer hit was not seriously injured. And Bear County deputies need help finding this man. Investigators say he's wanted on charge of indecency with a child. Deputies are concerned that 18 year old G. Dries Jair Arreda Rivera may leave the country. Investigators started looking for him last month after someone from West Bear County called them. Now, if you have any information on where he could be, you're asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office at number 210-335-6000. Now to Ukraine, where it's been a month since the Russian invasion began, but forces for Ukraine continue to fight back. Our sister station KPRC in Houston has a crew on the ground in Eastern Europe covering the situation. Reporter Zach Lashway is in Poland and visited a church that's been converted to a shelter for refugees. Helm Poland, a city with charm and character, is welcoming Ukrainians with arms wide open. In the heart of Helm, there appears to be no sign of war, but 15 miles from where we're standing, people are fleeing their country, leaving what they know life to be behind. Inside this Baptist church hangs art drawn by children forced out of their classrooms in Ukraine. A girl named May drew this. You see two flags that look similar to Russia and Ukraine, chaos and people running. <laughs> Communication, specifically language barriers, are challenging but can be conquered. How old are you? Yes. Five. Five. Having responded to other disasters, providing relief, how does this measure up? It's, it's just different. I've done a lot of different yeah. disasters as far as natural disasters. Uh, this is the first one that, that is just, I mean, like this, it's, it's different. Gary Finley, a volunteer with Texas Baptist Men, was born and raised in Houston. Now retired, Gary lives in San Antonio to be closer with his grandchildren. Have you been emotional since doing this work? <laughs> you would ask that. Yes, very much so. No matter how tough it gets, there's still work to be done. People still need help. Right now, as we speak, a truck is heading into Ukraine to an undisclosed location because of the severity of the situation. We don't want to give it away. They, they desperately need the aid where it's going. Natalia, her husband, Sergi, and their children left behind their life in Odessa, Ukraine, including loved ones. Friends from Russia, our friends, do not believe in that. We are very sad of, of this because all the time we had a uh, good uh, relationship with them, and now they don't believe the tr that um, the war is happening in Ukraine. So thank you for your uh, interview, for your program that shows the truth. Approximately 15 miles away at the Poland-Ukraine border. I'm scared. You just crossed the border from Ukraine? I'm from Ukraine. Yep. Where in Ukraine? Uh, Kiev. This young man, his sister, and their cat named Mars are en route to Germany. Just steps into Poland, we have food for animals, blankets for people to keep warm, and chopped firewood for them to make a fire. Organizations have set up shop at the border to help refugees navigate their new normal. We're feeding them, giving them water, just supporting them and where we can. We have the babies, feeding them milk, nappies, and diapers.
And that was Zach Lashley from KPRC reporting. He says, as for the Texas Volunteers, Team 1 from the Texas Baptist Men will head back to Texas this weekend. Now be sure to tune in to GMSA over the weekend. We will have continuing live reports from the Houston crew over there in Poland. And taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful weather. It's already 58 degrees. We started at 50 at the beginning of nine. <laughs> yeah, it jumped so quickly. In fact, we were in the 40s earlier, Steph. So th this is uh, already a huge warm up. We know by this afternoon it's going to be downright hot. We'll be close to 90 degrees. Uh, I want to show you a great picture coming out of our KSEC Connect. This is out of Seguin. And this is Womble enjoying the spring. Ah, that's a pretty dog. And you, you see the blue bonnets there. That is uh, quintessential spring for you. We love the pictures, especially the ones of the pets. You can send them in our KSAC Connect. Any spring pictures too, any of the flowers starting to bloom, it's great. We love it. Thank you so much for sending that in. Well, let's talk pollen count. Numbers are in. They all look pretty good. Molds low, 350. Oak, ash, hackberry, all there, but all in the low category. We're working into oak season, but so far hasn't been too, too bad. We see a lot of those oak leaves in the yards and uh, things like that, but it has not jumped up. Temperatures, 41 degrees in Junction, 49 Fredericksburg, 54 in LaGrange, 55 Gonzales, some 60s down to Catula, 61 degrees there and also in Uvalde. Uh, 52 Rio Medina, 52 in Bandera. You're still at 47 in Kerrville, but that number has jumped up quite a bit from where you were earlier this morning. Here's a look at the forecast for today, and it's full sun all day long. 81 degrees by 1 p.m. We're already into the mid-80s by 3 o'clock, and then I think we could be pushing 90 later this afternoon. Notice that we don't have a lot of wind there. Less wind today. And then this evening, you'll see those temperatures drop into the 70s and eventually back down close to 50 by tomorrow morning. Great weekend, though. Great weekend on the way. We're going to talk about that forecast. Our one lone rain chance in the seven day forecast. Uh, we'll have more on that coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, like everybody else, uh, the San Antonio Zoo is one of the many places gearing up for Fiesta. And that's where we find our Jonathan Cotto. And Jonathan, how are things looking out there and what can people expect? Stephanie, Mark, things are looking really festive. In fact, uh, Timmy Stewart and I, photojournalist Timmy Stewart and I, were just wondering if that's jungle music playing in the background or cumbias, because after all, it is fiesta season. And if you can't tell by the background, Fiesta has officially arrived here at the San Antonio Zoo. But with me to expand a little bit more on all things Fiesta here at the zoo is Kyle Perez. Kyle, what can folks expect this morning? Hi, Jonathan. It is great to be here in San Antonio. Right now, we are doing our Locals Day. PNC Bank is our new sponsor for 2022 season of Locals Day, which just means Bear County residents can come out to San Antonio Zoo and just do it for $8 admission, which we're really excited about. But that's not the only thing going on right now. We have Fiesta medals. I know it is the season for Fiesta, and we're really excited to do it. So we are debuting our new 2022 Fiesta medal. It is the train, and if you come by today, Today for our locals day, PNC Bank, you will get $1 off your Fiesta medal and you can take your train medal over to our train depot and get $1 off a train ride as well. Now Kyle, this, there's more than one medal and folks love their medals. Yes. Talk to us about the second one that's available. Absolutely. So we also have our Will Smith Zoo School Fiesta Medal. And Will Smith Zoo School is the largest nature-based preschool here in, in the United States. And so it is a wonderful program that we have started here in San Antonio and at San Antonio Zoo. And you can come pick up that medal here for a dollar off today as well. Kyle, you guys are busy here at the San Antonio Zoo. A number of events also included in the lineup is the Monarch Festival. Talk to me about that. Yes, yeah, so it is also the season for Fiesta, but also Monarch season as well. So we are doing Monarch Fest here at San Antonio Zoo this weekend. So that'll be Saturday and Sunday. There'll be activations. There'll be free milkweed that we'll be giving away, seeds, things that can you, uh, you can use to make your own butterfly garden at home. It's gonna be beautiful and fun. Come from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's when all the Monarch activations will be happening this weekend. It's gonna be a fun weekend to be here at San Antonio's. It sure is. Now, Kyle, these beautiful medals, how much are they going for? Yes, so regular price is $10.95, but if you stop by today at our PNC Bank Locals Day, it's going to be $1 off just for you. And of course, go ride the train ride. We do have a very new train, San Antonio Zoo train, which just exuberates the color and the vibrancy of San Antonio, San Antonio Zoo, and everything that's happening in our future. Kyle, thank you so much, folks. There you have it. Look, this is the Will Smith 2022 San Antonio Zoo medal as well as the San Antonio Zoo official medal. Come on out, get yours. I have mine. We're going to be here for the remainder of the morning, so I expect to see you. Mark, Stephanie. 
All right, have fun, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Getting us in the Fiesta spirit. And by the way, speaking of Fiesta spirit, spirit we have an appointment for you tonight. That's right. Uh, watch us. We're going to be doing the porch parade this year. This is the second time we do this, and it's going to be from 7 to 8. And we're going to have this year's winners, but we, we're also talking to the ones who won last year as well. It's presented by Battle of Flowers and the Fiesta Flambeau Parades. Again, second annual porch parade airing tonight from 7 to 8 right here on KSAT 12. We'll see you then. All right. Time now, 942 and 60 degrees for now. You're watching GMSA at 9. Still to come, a lot of events going on this weekend, including Ciclovia. We'll have a look at those details coming up. And we're back at 945. Yeah, there are a lot of events happening this weekend. We have Ciclovia, things mm -hmm. at the zoo. People getting outside, doing all sorts of yeah. stuff. I'm going to go fishing tomorrow. Can't that's wait. Right, that's awesome. And the weather's going to work out for you. Yeah. Uh, what's the wind going to be like tomorrow oh. between here and Austin, Justin? Horn? Okay, so we're talking 5 to 15, some gusts to 20. Okay. Can we deal with that? We can. Uh, okay. I'm going to be on Lake LBJ, so we'll I just don't want to be a sailboat all day, you know, a personal <laughs> no, sailboat. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. I think you'll be okay. I think Thank you'll you. be okay. Okay. Uh, so, some gusts up there, but I don't think it's, it's going to be white caps or anything like okay, that. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the oak season, where we are. So it tends to pick up right after April 1st, and mid-April is when we peak with oak pollen. We're getting there, right? So uh, the numbers so far this year haven't been all that bad. We're at 40 today. Uh, as we get into April, the numbers will likely go up some more, but oak season hasn't been too, too bad. Knock on wood. Uh, we'll see where we end up in April. Just want to give you a heads up there. Also, the air quality today, unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it. So if you have asthma, be aware there's some high levels of ozone today. It's an ozone action day, and uh, it's unhealthy for, again, those in the sensitive category. We see that from time to time here. As we go outside for you, 52 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 28. That number is still fairly low. Northwesterly winds at about 3. And today, winds will be fairly light. This is kind of our one day where we lose the wind a little bit. 64 degrees in Uvalde, 51 Kerrville, 52 New Braunfels, already up to 61 in Gonzales and 59 in Pleasanton. Uh, 55 Stinson, 49 Canyon Lake, you're at 44 Comfort, 51 currently in Honda. Our forecast today takes us up to 77 by noontime, and then we're in the mid to upper 80s by the afternoon, full sun. It's going to be a warm day, and uh, these will be the, the kind of the conditions we see uh, over the weekend as well. 77 by 8 p.m., 74 by 9 p.m. with clear skies. Uh, here's a look at the dew points. Uh, they're low today, probably in the 20s. By tomorrow, they jump up into the 40s. That helps a little bit. Helps with fire danger, too, as we get these dew points to climb some. And then they peak on Tuesday. We see dew points in the muggy territory. Does not last. Front comes through. We get dry air again Wednesday, Thursday. We're hoping, though, we're hoping that that front, though, kicks up a few showers and maybe some storms. Forecast this weekend, if you have plans to be out and about, as uh, Steph and Mark said there's a lot going on 89 Saturday 87 Sunday in general it looks pretty good the winds will be gusty from time to time especially during the afternoon so cool mornings a uh, warm afternoons future cast shows uh, we could see a little bit of fog tomorrow morning down closer to the coast that'll be the case Sunday too maybe getting a little bit closer to San Antonio Sunday morning if we see anything it'll be very brief Monday morning we get clouds maybe some fog and then it's Tuesday that uh, we watch as our storm system comes in and that's when we start to get some of the lift. And there is about a 30% chance of some storms. Small window, small window. This is going to be Tuesday night, early, early Wednesday morning. And then this clears out. We get drier air on Wednesday. There is the potential for a few strong storms. Storm Prediction Center is flagged in the area there in North Texas, Oklahoma. For that, a little early to talk. Uh, severe weather here. I, I don't think that we're going to see much, but something to watch. I think the best chance will be to our north. So the forecast again over the weekend, warm, 85 Monday, 84 on Tuesday. But behind the system, it doesn't cool down all that much. We just get cooler mornings, 47 on Thursday, 84 as we officially go into Fiesta. And speaking of Fiesta, we've got a medal giveaway, weather medal giveaway coming up this evening. Line starts at 4 p.m., medals at 6. It's at Pika Pika Plaza. Come join Mike and I. We'll be giving away the weather medals. It's a lot of fun. I'm just there to get a medal from Mike. You know, Mike's, <laughs> Mike's the man. 
So anyway, oh. join us there. You guys uh, are going to get season. swamped. Yes, you are. It's exciting. Fiesta season's here. Wear, wear your name tags. Hello, my name's Justin. Yes. Hello, my name's Mike. Will do. Okay. <laughs> Good. Have, Have fun, fun out there, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Also happening this weekend, Ciclovia is returning the Southtown route. We'll have the roads closed from the South Florida's HEB to Roosevelt Park. Now, this is your chance for you, your family, and your pets to get outside, play, exercise, explore without having to worry about traffic. So this will take place on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right now, it's about 10 till 60 degrees. We'll be right back. Today we're highlighting two businesses that are helping add some Fiesta flair to our KSAT garden as we count down to the big porch parade special tonight right here on KSAT 12. And so many people feeling Fiesta vibes early and as SA Live's Jen Tobias Stresky shows us, it's thanks to businesses like these. To take a look. What's a huge fiesta party without all the fun decorations? Rebecca Garcia with the Stream Factory and Natasha Diaz with the Balloons Boutique San Antonio are teaming up to fiestify our KSAC garden as we count down to the biggest party of the year. This year, we decided to go bigger than last year, uh, kind of step things up, make it more colorful, a lot bigger, add in more streamers. So we went with a 30 foot wall. Last year it was 25. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a big difference. Um, that's over 100 feet, uh, to be exact, of hand cut, hand tied streamers. We decided to try something we've never done before, which is go with this beautiful, Pinata looking backdrop in the shape of a pentagon um, just to kind of add as like a little, you know, fiesta, more fiesta pinata type vibe. Streamers, balloons, and some KSAT themed decor too. These two local businesses did not hold back to help KSAT throw the ultimate porch parade party. This is something they do all year long for all occasions, oftentimes teaming up for the celebrations. So this started during the pandemic because we actually had a huge birthday party planned for my daughter that we had to cancel and I ended up just going up to our attic and seeing what decorations I had to use um, because I wasn't able to use vendors like Balloons Boutique at the time and so I just made do with what I had and didn't think that I was going to even get anything cute out of it but ended up making it so fun that other friends asked if I could do their birthdays or drive-by parties. So if you're looking to add some balloon art, maybe some streaming pops of color as well. We're available pretty much any day, every day for inquiries. And uh, we're looking at a back up there along 281. It's, uh, it looks like we have an accident or a crash there at uh, 281 and he'll drain right at the curve by Alamo Stadium. It's causing some backups there. You can see 281 at Grayson. This is northbound, we believe. So heads up there if you're going to be traveling. Definitely uh, northbound. Northbound, yep. yes. Uh, well, now let's look at the forecast. Uh, we've got temperatures up around 88 degrees this afternoon, close to 90 over the weekend. A little breezy both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we got our rain chances coming in Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. Maybe a couple of thunderstorms, but the window's pretty small. And no, we didn't put Easter on Thursday. That's no. Pasca on it. Yes. 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 Everybody have a great weekend. Bye. Have fun tonight, Judson. <laughs> <laughs>